she know I got a girl, but she don't give a fuck. She know I got power, and I'm in a sucker. I ate your average motherfucker, rockin' a Mary trucker. Foreign car, she's beige color. Off white, look like I hit a same homie. Me and Tro smoking back to back, we them pain brodies. T.O. finna come home, so you know we finna make it rain on them. Shit ain't no gang, homie. Gang blows brain from my ass for top. Now she giving brain from me. Kicked her off the whip, she brought the train, homie. I'm insane. Smoking backwards to try to ease this pain. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's rolling. It's rolling. We rolling. What's up, baby? What's good? It's Malls and Money. We back at it like a crack at it. It's your two brothers back on the screen. King Cash. My boy King Willow in the building today. Yeah. Yeah. I hope I hope y'all been tapping in. Y'all better been tapping in. Keep liking, keep subscribing, but keep tapping into breaking the black barrier. That been going crazy. Been going strong. Tune into the last interview with Chef D. That was cool. We know we in a spot right now. Hope y'all like the new setup. It's going to keep getting better. We always got to keep getting better. You know, that's the motto. Shout out to brother. Shout out my brother, Tone. Always getting better. A-B. You know what's going A-3-B. on? A-3-B. You know what's going on, man. Y'all better have checked out that interview as well. But today, you know, we came to you to bring you a crazy conversation, right? Because we don't really talk about politics. Nah, not we, really. don't, we don't get into not the enough. political uh, climate. Of, of the United States of America, but I feel like this weekend was a good weekend to talk about it because basically the Olympics is ending, right? That's one uh, of a U.S. type of standpoint. Everybody in the United States need to stand strong for, for the Olympic gold medal. For the country. You feel me? For the country. But right now, with the political race, you know, it always puts a divide in between the country and in, in between us as a community, which be crazy. And I want to talk about the mind game, you feel me, that we always see when it's four years, every, you feel me, every four years, it's a mind game, it's a mind trick. And we end up either falling, either way we're going to fall to it because we're citizens of the United States. But when I say fall to it, it's, you feel me, like you get caught up in who you run, who you picking and, and things like that. It's not about if you vote in Democrat or if you vote Republican, it's about if you realize what they utilizing, the tactics that they utilizing to get you to vote Democrat, honestly. Because mm-hmm. when you talk to this a mad long time. You, you feel me? You know my brother love to talk about that. So it's like they especially they tap into our community so much, so well, right? But it's like some people say you're picking the lesser evil. I'd rather say you're picking the one that wants to stab you in the back the most and not be up front with you. It's like when we tell us as the younger generation, when we tell older generation the things that we found out in our research about these parties and how they done transformed themselves, it's like they look at you very astonished and confused and then honestly want to bash you because it's like, what are you saying? I'm not even going to lie. Honestly, the Democratic Party, they ain't really like, they never, they didn't. Transform them, transform themselves. What they really did was like a shape, a snake when they shut their skin up. Exactly, but that's still transforming yourself. It's more, nah. It's more like I would say evolution. They evolved. Mm -hmm. They didn't transform. They evolved. Mm -hmm. They they went from being something that was like, like they out in the open with their tactics and whatever the case may be. And over time, I guess they realized that they have to appeal to what people say is the minority mm-hmm. you know since we the really the majority we are really the majority they have to appeal to that specific masses and you know what we say get their democratic point across <laughs> that's how they can call it <laughs> the reason why i brought this up is because one we know that now again for this upcoming election we have another woman running for the democratic party because joe biden ended up just stepping down for some weird reason what reason was that bro I want to know what was he the was real reason that he stepped down. down. Honestly, he was honestly other than you being ninety years old, but like, you got your vice president running, which is Camilla Harris, and I see a lot of conversations. You feel me? Even one on the bus, walking, people even ask me like, "Oh, you voting for?" And you know, you just gotta ask them. 
why are you asking me if I'm going to vote for her? Because she's the next one up. Is there not another person maybe that could be better than her? Like, why are you asking me that? Pop your ish. To, to, to even get into it, people don't even be understanding that there's just, there's more than like a Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. You have like several candidates that mm -hmm. opt in to run for the presidential. Right. Nominee. It's not always just the Democratic Party and the Republican you got Party. Multiple parties, about you four. So. You can stand with your by yourself on a, in another whole party and check a whole nother box. So it's like we only stuck on these two parties, right? But being that I'm talking about Camilla Harris, I want to talk about the mind game that we kind of see going on, and you mostly see it on social media, I guess, because you're really not gonna see it on the news. Right, they're not going. You you see it on the news, but you got to catch it, right? But you catch it when I say social media, people actually pointing it out. Like, bro, they done changed her her father's basically nationality on Google. Yeah, a long time ago, as a matter of fact, she was in an interview with some lady on a cooking channel, a cooking show, and the lady was talking to her about her like her hindu indian background right and it was like talking about how she is the first asian american to run for for president and it's like all right you identify with that probably like about four years ago and then longer than that four years now later you identifying with the black community it's almost like you pandering and people say you this identifying about with Trump. the with the black community but when we say black we got to really specify what we're saying you you narrowing it down to the African American community. Yeah, right? pretty much. Because why I brought up her father is because her father is not an African American. Her oh, father yeah. is has Jamaican descent, and it also says that he has the Indian Jamaican descent. So he's probably not even full blown as coolie, right? He's not even full blown Afro Jamaican, right? As they would consider all Jamaican is not the the the. the the description right. you would give to someone who is of color or not of color. You got white Jamaicans, mm -hmm. you got black Jamaicans, you got Jamaicans all across all, the board. All it's more different like a, shades. a cultural thing with that. So to say that her father's Jamaican is not really saying he's black. You're just saying that he'd be on some ragwan. Exactly. But then at, the it's reason why I say that is because if he was to consider himself and say, I am a Jamaican, he would not say, I am black. Black word. Jamaican he would not anything. say I am black. He would say I am Jamaican. Yeah. And that is what I feel like we need to realize as a people. And that's what we've been saying for a little minute now, right? Stop boiling it down to just, oh, I'm black. I'm black and I'm proud. I used to love to say that shit. Why? Because I I, I grew up hearing it from the from the elders. You feel me? That shit sounded cool. It seemed cool. The the you feel me? The 70s movement and all that shit. That shit was James Brown and all that shit. That shit was cool. You feel me? But when you now we're down, you see the mind game with this. Black is tied to only African American people. It ain't tied to nobody else with our shade, no and everybody ethnic. else can have our shade. No other ethnic. Really ethnic. think about that, my brother. Morals and money. And then with the pandemic. So when you're part, making money with somebody, you got to really think about, like, yo, bro, huh? how he looking at me? Matter of fact, fuck it. We both making green, right? Got the green game between. But at the same time, have the same type of morals. We ain't gonna cross each other. And look too, like the pandering, like with the whole, and everybody say it, like with Donald Trump or whatever, if he's pandering, then he's been pandering to the black community for like 30 something years. Mm -hmm. He's been doing it for a, a extremely, extremely long time. They used to be a fan of Trump before everybody started to switch over and turn a new leaf once he said, yo, I'm running for president. Yo, Snoop Dogg, you know, 50 Cent. Listen, whether um, he's a racist Dr. or not, Gray. bro. Now look, Dr. Dre, uh, uh, mad different people who uh, appealed to his uh, demeanor, his character, and that's because he was somebody with money. Mm -hmm. So they could pull that pandering card with DT, but at the end of the day, if he's pandering, he'd been pandering to us, our grandparents, our aunts, uncles, the whole diaspora from now all the way up until, what, 1970? So some things you just got to make sense out of. You know, that's, why, that's why I say to say that. And then when I, again, when we go back to say the mind game, ask yourself, what, what mind game this nigga Chris talking about? What, what mind game we talking about? Bro, the other day on the news, right, Camilla Harris and her political race went to Houston and went to basically all, went to Atlanta as well, brought out Megan, right? 
Of course, you got to bring out a rapper celebrity. You made a mockery out of Right? Of course, you got to bring out a rapper celebrity, but a woman rapper celebrity so you can attach, you feel me? Woman pride, right? Not only that. Let's you, really think about she, it. Woman she, pride. She brought, and then also, Camilla Harris, right? We already talked about the real ethnicity background that she has, but as a college student, she went to Howard. But can so people, who did she who look, does she can, align with? Can people I, I want people and people can ask themselves this question too. Why Megan the Stallion out of all people? Why? Why? You could have got Jill Scott, you could have got Alicia Keys, you could have got Beyonce, you got Megan. You could have got Stallion. Erica Badu. And it's not you could have got so, uh Solange. And it's not more so appealing you to Shanti. To the uh to like to just the female masses, she wants to appeal to the younger generation. Also to the, the women younger generation. Also to the women that that are on that wave. That like, independency mindset. All right. That hot girl shit. Yeah. <laughs> let's let let's <laughs> really talk about it right now. And y'all may not like it, but we're gonna talk about That's it. the truth. Right? <laughs> so like I just said, Camilla Harris is not to bash you. We just gonna point out facts on how the Shout political out. race plays a mind game in our community and our Big community thing. needs to realize it. So like I said, she brought out Megan and when she was a student in college, she went to Howard. So who does she align with? She aligns with our community, yeah, right? Our community. But her her background, their ancestors wouldn't align with our community. Let's realize that. So she's an AKA and who's going back her? All of the, the D9 sororities, but especially the AKAs. Now, the AKAs is one of the biggest sororities of the D9, I believe, right? Basically, hopping women, right? All legit women. She became a, uh, she bought, she bought, you feel me, vice president. Yeah. You feel me? So that sorority right there, all, think about it, all the young women when they in school be, oh yeah, that right there, you feel me? You want to attach yourself because you think about the networking. Yeah. You think about the connections, the business you could, uh, uh, deal, you feel me, deal with or get into. You feel me? People that, you just, just the connections, like I said, you're going to meet people, get into the different doors, boom. That's why the, the mindset of sororities and Greeks, um, the sororities and frats are even promoted to us, right? They're a but political the entity time, within itself. Exactly. People don't understand that. Exactly. All so fraternities if are political they're, they're going to back her, what do they want in return? That's what we got to, you gotta always got to think about something. got to think about it. What do the D9 sororities want in return? Funding. More funding, more money, more money to put into their sororities, into their fraternities, so those groups can get bigger and bigger and bigger. They could bring in more people, you know, and more it, popularity. And like, come on now, make like, it make it cool again, because you know people don't care about going to school no more. Right, you right, you get the the D nines on the. The, the presidential campaign now you got all the hot girls like well I'm a hot girl and I'm gonna go to college I'm too. gonna go to college I'm gonna I'm gonna join a sorority and then, and then so, you, know you feel me I'm a I'm gonna be in school you feel me maybe yeah. I'm gonna become successful maybe not who knows but I'm gonna have that t attached to my name I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make myself feel good by having that attached to my name but let's like really think about that it's cool too though to do it you know have ain't no knock on it because you feel me a lot of people are certain places because of that, right? Mm -hmm. But let's look at it. Let's mm -hmm. look at that. Now let's go backwards to when they first started. The D9 nickname is the Hellenic, Hellenistic. The Hellenic, Hellenic. Council. AKA the Hellenistic Council. Hellenistic. Yeah, I understand. The Hellenic. If you look up Hellenic and know what that is attached to, of course, they're using Greek letters. But what in the world? Hellenic? Hellenistic? Hell. <laughs> It's Greek shamanism. Yo, in my career, we couldn't even say hell when we was young. It was H E double hockey sticks. All that Greek shamanism. <laughs> That's all that is. But what do you think that attaches to? Devil worship. Bro, I'm just saying, man. So, like I said, all this mind game, we got to look at the, look at it, pay attention to it. Don't just be like, oh, yeah, I'm voting for her because she a melanated woman. She black. We got to vote for her. That's the same shit niggas did when Obama ran. Yeah. Yeah, and what make it even funnier is that. Obama got in office and did nothing but shit hurt got worse. People. Yeah, he just hurt black. Shit people. got worse. Matter of fact, around that time, that's when we were spending all of that money on the wars, similar to now over there in the Middle East, whatever the case may be. Then we go into motherfucking uh, 2008. Then, then we have recession. 2008, 2008, the recession hit. After that, taxes high as a bitch. Uh, crime high as a motherfucker. Crime high, interest rates is high. You know, uh, black Americans not not being able to like fully establish themselves especially like with uh 
for those who've been living here for like hundreds and thousands of years, so to say, you know, this our country. So it's crazy to think that, you know, with the so-called black president, you know, supposed to open those doors for us, all these fraternities and all of these. Um, you, you would said, think you, know, you would think they would really like support right uh, oppress black people, but it don't work out like that. And like I said, the sororities and and frats, it's no knock to y'all. Y'all supposed to be doing all the community work and things like that. I hope y'all still doing it. But is that what the that's what y'all want in return? More funding so y'all could do more community work. And when I say let's get back to the 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 history of it, the history of y'all is y'all basically seclude yourselves yeah away from people that y'all don't think <laughs> is up y'all upper echelon that's so funny that is so funny that you mentioned so we that. all in that's college so but you don't think i'm worthy enough to be in y'all frat how did i make it to college how it's did i make like, it to this university it's just like with the mulatto class. i'm just saying it's like the, with i went the to mulatto school. class or the Mezzicico i graduated class. with people that was frats and sororities like i said no knock to y'all but y'all basically saying that because you're in the frat and you're in a sorority I couldn't join because I'm not of your upper echelon. Yeah. Yo, bro, in Mexico, they did it. Spain, they How did are we it. supposed to stick together as a community, whole community, if you're making groups, Look, subgroups? South America, they did it. Africa, they did it, right? People don't like to hear this stuff, though, because it, it, it ruffles feathers. Like, yes. Everybody want to be pro-black, but they don't understand, right? They don't overstand that. <laughs> they don't say it one more time, they don't overstand. They don't overstand. Many different groups of people was moving like that. I learned like no cap in Mexico. The same thing that was happening here with the mulatto, the Negro, the the the, the, the light skinned man, the black, the dark skinned man. It was happening in Mexico and over there. If you weren't identified as a criollo, mm -hmm. then you weren't fit to be in the upper echelon of the Mexican hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And it's it's funny too because even those people mm -hmm. they fought against slavery, but only to get votes. To better their ideal cause, mm. which was to pretty much keep the money in they circle, keep the wealth in they circle, and everybody else on the outside remain poor. And look how that, look how think that, but it. and let's let's think about words again. If y'all tap in to the podcast, if y'all tap in to other episodes, y'all will understand. Watching the last one of the last interviews with my Morris brother, that linguistics and language is important. Look how my brother Will just said. If you wasn't part of the Criola, right? Think about it. What is that attached to nowadays in this day and age? Criola people in Louisiana. Creoles. Creoles. And they are all different shades. Colors. Criola. Colors. Right? Bright as hell to dark. So you mean to tell me? Uh, I didn't see One time I seen a video of some Louisiana. A, a Louisianians, they had um, they was at a family reunion, mm -hmm. and the person that's you feel me doing the video is the lightest person there, like like your mother, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah, like your mom's, light as hell. Go to her cousin, your complexion. Go to her cousin, me. Go to the other cousin, same thing. We like, oh, but y'all consider me not black, bro. This my family. Uh uh. Mm -hmm. So we gotta understand, like shades of wheat, huh? Shades of wheat. Like, we got to understand, melanin comes in all type of shades. So when we say, oh, black, what is you saying? that? What are you attaching that to? African-American. And when people say they're not black, they don't want to be African-American. Damn, bro. That should be weird when you really think about it. Because anytime you see somebody say, oh, yeah, I'm black and I'm proud or I'm this and that, they don't necessarily have to be African-American, right? They they attach the afro to whatever they are. And that's what Kamala doing. So let's let's really think about it. Again, they playing the mind game on the whole community. She's playing the mind her her party. Let's let's put it like that. Her party. Because it's not just her. I don't want to put it on her. It's her party. They're playing the mind game on our community. And what do our generation, like myself, we realize that, but the older Relatives, you feel me? Our parents and things like that. They just drown in that bull crap. They drown in it. They they don't realize it. It's so cold. So anybody that watches us, we want y'all to really realize it. What you trying to say? Why are you coming to us? Why you want our votes? Want to make it even more 
more like simple for y'all, right? And it's great to be proud to be American. It's great to be proud of who you are, but understand who you are. In the 1850s, you had black people that were proud to be American, right? And it's so real that around that time, that's when most black folks was like dealing with the Republican Party, the Reconstruction. Mm -hmm. That's why I always speak about it because. That's pretty much the prime moment in politics where black people really realize, like, yo, this Democrat stuff ain't for us. Mm. And I'm not saying this to pick a side, but ever since then, they were dividing white and black people by inciting race wars, right? By doing little things like, remember that video? It went viral like a year ago. They had the boat and the oh yeah, the boat, um, and the, the white dude, the um, the boat master, basically the boat master. Right. Shit. If this was the 1850s, the Democratic Party would have took that scenario and played it on every freaking television for 24 hours straight, just to get people to believe that, that black people, black, white people. black people, but but to believe that black people, as in African American people, people that are born in America that are our shade, are wild, crazy, and animalistic. That too. Too. Just like the riots. Just like the riots. <laughs> like, come on now, bro. Like, we gotta really realize that shit. Folks would be tight if I tell you. We gotta that understand right now. a lot of people don't like us, right? Because of our shape. But it's because of the depiction that we are that we have. Whether it's on social media, it's in movies, it's in TV, it was in uh uh the books. You understand? You only had four channels in 1950, bro. I'm going to say that again. Four channels in the 1950s. So anything somebody seen is the same thing, the same story that they got played in their mind. So why would you think? What if I keep seeing somebody dark skin bugging on the screen, I'm going to think anybody that's dark skin is going to bug out. Bugging out. That's the democratic like, propaganda time machine. Now, like so I said, it. when we first started this conversation, both parties... Like my brother said, evolved. So now you think it's just picking the lesser evil, all right? One party don't give a fuck about you because they want the rich to get richer. One party give a fuck about you because they making laws sound good. But I got another question, right? How do how do the laws sound good for everybody that so called believe in a faith? How does the what the laws that they're making sound good if you believe in a so called faith and a so called you know, you're, spirit, you're higher spirit. up. You're, you're the Christians. You know, I don't want to say it like that, but Christian people, you know, we believe that everything is forgiven. But these laws, if you if you read the laws of the Most High, everything ain't really gonna be forgiven just because they, as in the United States, created laws to say, yeah, this shit is cool. Mm. Like you gotta understand, bro. That's a good one because that brings me to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Yeah. You gotta understand, like certain things were put in place so us melanated people wouldn't keep it going and be together long lasting. You understand? Because in the fifties, there were families long lasting. Mm -hmm. What are there now? Divorce rates high as hell. Abortion high as hell because niggas don't put on condoms and you know to each his own. But it it, it 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 ain't even just them. If we're gonna do it like that, both both sides gotta take accountability because at the end of the day, girls the one that open their legs, right? Yeah. Your father and your mother didn't teach you better. So and they ain't teach the, the young men any better either. But it goes back to what you said. Mothers, fathers, grandparents, really lynch theory, um, not being taught how to carry yourself as a like a, a righteous person and just doing the right thing. No morals. No morals, man. No moral code, no ethics, no principles. Yeah. I was just talking to, you feel me, one of my guys in the hood, and he was saying how one of the, one of the little kids ain't got no manners. He don't say thank you, nothing. And I was just saying, like, he gon he said he gonna grow up and just be the same way. Of course he is. If he don't learn now, he's gonna grow up and be yeah. the same way. Then a female is gonna come in his contact and be like, damn, why he don't got no manners? Because he was never taught any. He was never taught no respect. He was never taught any. He was never shown any. In love. Frederick Douglass said that you could, it is hard to train a man, but it's easier to train a boy. Because the man already got his mind made up. Uh, exactly. Once you're past a certain age, you ain't really hearing nothing. Your ears is open, but they really shut. So this is why I just mentioned the older generation. Their ears is open, but they shut to us. 
they is is open to the propaganda that they heard for so many years of playing on the word black. When I know it's real, bro, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a quick a quick funny story too about this democratic uh propaganda machine, right? And I call it that because they constantly like a TV show every 30 minutes, every segment is just more propaganda, more bullcrap, whatever the case may be. But in the 1850s, what they did was they um they took this group called the, the White Caps, right? White Caps. This is a group full of mixed race, uh, man and woman, white, black, no matter what you want to call it, whatever the case may be. And what they used to do was they used to antagonize the richer black folks that lived in the community, the bourgeoisie, mm. those people, the, the black people that associate themselves with the fraternities or whatever. Mm. They uh, terrorized them so much that the Democrats picked up on that and created the term that we all see today as the Ku Klux Klan. They were originally called white caps. And mm -hmm. what made it... I'm glad you just gave the backstory on what that. What made it so historical is that those same, like these same people, that became the propaganda for the Democrats. They used to use the KKK to incite race wars or kill off certain prominent black folks who lived in the South who had political places of power. Mm -hmm. we and have so and, many black and re religious places of, and you know, because yeah. the church is prominent in our community. The church, right. you can't have church. The church is political. Right. The church and the state. They exactly. The church and the state back in Rome. Exactly. For a whole long time. And that's ago. why so many states in the South, that's what they go by. You go to church, church. and that's what the state goes by. Basically, most of the churches you feel me? Rules the and regulations. And, politics. And, and yeah, whatever the, those high pastors and priests they deal with, they deal with the city officials. Yeah, and they, they was murking them dudes off, and those same people were voting Republican. Those mm -hmm. same people were Republicans to the core, to the bone. Those same people, if you want to talk about the good things they did, were putting money into the impoverished community. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy when you really yeah. sit down and look at it and then you do have the information like like he just said of history. You feel me? History is very important when you're moving forward because it's who we dealing with now. Everything we dealing with now. You feel everything. me? It's, it's what we it's everything that we come in contact with now. All right. Even the the I wanna shout out the you feel me, check out the coloring book my brother oh, yeah. got on Amazon. Oh, yeah, man. Go get that. We're gonna have volume two coming out real soon. All right, and even with that, y'all gonna see that us melanated people, we didn't started it. Everything this is our land, but we didn't start it almost everything. Everything that we use right now, right here, this right here, we we didn't. Somebody invented this that looked like me, that looked mm -hmm. like him. Your car won't start without a black person. You understand? So it's like we utilize the word black so much, and I just wanted to say that they play with this mind game on our community, but we need to realize it. And we need to recognize it and then understand, like, all right, are we going to keep rolling with this or are we going to go in another direction? Or are we going to teach the next generation to peep it? You feel me? Keep peeping what they're saying. Realize that words are very meaningful and they are important. So when somebody say, oh, I'm not black, don't, don't catch an attitude. Ask them why they're saying that. Why you, why you feel like that? Oh, because I'm this and that. You should say, oh, okay, I am this and this. You feel like you're you, black and African American, then understand when they when they attach certain things, they only talking about you and your specific group. They're not talking about anybody else. Yep. They're not talking about anybody else that's look like us. Because when you really think about it, we so black to the core, why we just ain't rock with South Sudan? You understand? Why we don't rock with certain places like that? Copper why they don't rock with us? Copper colored. You understand? The Why they don't 1828 rock with us? definition for the American Aboriginal is copper colored Americans. So before they was even black, they was out here calling niggas copper colored. That's all I'm gonna say. More. Mm -hmm. Right? More. More. It's another one. It's another term. Right? It's the reason why. Uh, uh, ruddy, swarthy, tawny. We can continue. They even call certain folks dusty or dirty. Right? You look like you're dusty, you got dust all over you, stuff like that, bro. Tell me, bro. Mm -hmm. They try to if you ain't check out the interview what I said with my Moore's brother, Demigod, please check that out. Again, like we said, the word black is meaningful, right? 
but understand how the propaganda is using the word black and how it is attacking our community. Mm -hmm. Please notice how it is dividing our community in half. You feel me? From all 50 states, dividing our community in half. And it shouldn't. Everything always divides us, whether it's, you feel me? Like we said, skin pigmentation, you want to say you, you lighter, I'm darker, and this and that. But again, that's a mind game that we learn from them. It's also funny, too, how now Kamala is trying to appeal to the to the sororities and the frats and all of that because those are the same people who supported the Republicans back in the day. It's just so funny. Like, it's really pandering at its all time high when you look at it. Supreme pandering. 360,000 college graduates of just women. That's crazy. They're really. That's gonna, fine women. Look, they doing their thing. They Proud. Use dumb. Well, applause to y'all. No bullshit. Applause to y'all because I know y'all getting that back. They're going to use dumb in the mic. But they. Right? They are, you understand, they the using y'all, and then y'all gonna, from, and this is all age groups, 50s, 40s, 30s, and 20s, yeah. and probably 60s, because uh -huh. you know, you feel me, y'all been around for a long time, so that's generations, and y'all got generations in y'all families that's AKAs, so that's all of y'all going to vote for her, just because she an AKA. And the whole Democratic baby situation, that was funded by uh, an extremist, and a racist, and a communist, just to let y'all know, so do the research. You could look it up. Go Google. What's his name? Hmm? What's the name? It's a female. I forgot her name. I could probably tell y'all right now. You're talking about the one that they play, playing here, Helen? Yeah. Helen? Yeah. Her name is Helen. Yeah, Helen. But yeah, she's an extremist, a racist. She's I forgot her last name. My name is Helen. Her first and name is Helen. There's an apology letter out on Google right now. You could do it. Planned Parenthood apology letter. Uh, the Negro laws. It's a full eight page letter. You can read through it. And that's the Planned Parenthood organization, aka the old Negro law, apologizing to people for some of the nasty things that they were doing. So, I think about all that stuff. Like, what are you voting for? Like, what are the policies? Go back and look at some of the the laws that were put into place. Go back and look at all of that stuff. Go as far as back. Everybody as saying years. Trump policy. Trump policy is Trump policy. But you feel me? I think that. The, the Heritage Foundation is the people that are just there. No, they're they helping him, but he going to take certain things from them. I, I agree with certain things that's coming out of that joint. No, I do. You feel me? A lot of y'all don't because y'all like the liberal idea of how things are in, in life right now. If you, you like how things is going right now, you feel me? You like all this in America, then do what you do. Them same people like the fact that kids could be taught about certain stuff in school at a certain age or they're being overly exposed to sexual activity and all of that. All of that stuff is left wing it's, propaganda, bro. All of it. It's like I don't know. All of it. So none of it is You know how things right have wing. like a, a, a certain age limit. They don't want a certain age limit. Everything is for everybody. Yeah. I don't agree with that. And that's nuts. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. They had Adult crazy. Swim for a reason. It, it was, was called adults. Adult Swim. Games were made either E for everybody, E for everybody, T for teen, or M for mature. And not, all not for natural. and all for a rated R, right? <laughs> then that's even with movies too. And that under these Democrats' policies, everything will be E for everybody, bro. Everything they will not. Everything that was will a be good exposed. Set up for gaming. E was for everybody. He was for teens and, and, the and they sure. specified 13 and 16, 13 and 17. They tell you, like, what age group are we targeting this media to? That's why, even with Grand Theft Auto, they tell you it's rated M. But just to know that content in the video games, you're using this to influence your adult child, so not your seven year old, even though seven year olds may play GTA. That's why we gotta. That's why people think life is GTA right now, bro. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's why people think life is GTA. I had a kid say that shit in the chicken spot one day. Like, yo, bro, why you ain't, nigga, why you ain't draw that shit like it was GTA? I said, what the fuck, this nigga? Even looking at it from a bigger scale, not only from what you do in the game, but they just think life is a game in general. Like, like no bullshit. Nothing I heard one of the, um, I think it was the Florida uh, governor. DeSantis? Yeah, I think he passed a law that any um child rapist, yeah, could, you're um, getting packed. Yeah, you're getting packed. How do y'all feel about laws like that? I agree, I, with, agree that. with that. I agree with that. I agree with stuff like 100%. that. Hundred percent. You got to get gut. 
But then he also the same one <laughs> that was saying children? that. children? What type of sicko shit is that? Those are the things where people got to go. You feel me? You, that's where you make subgroups of people. Like, if those people are in our community, they need to go because you ain't helping. Yeah. You are detrimental. You sick in the head. You got to be placed on the sideline. And he he also said, he was uh, the same person who said that history can't be taught in schools no more. Like, older history, they got to stop teaching it in the schools. That's only the, one of the only things that I felt like was an issue, but it's okay because if you can't get it there, I don't care. So that's how I feel. Always check out Breaking the Black Barrier, exactly. Morals and Money, Copper Color Productions, you heard? But also, you feel me? It's YouTube University everywhere. What you don't learn it. Well, we didn't learn, we didn't learn half of the shit we just said in school, bro. So, I mean, I don't agree with that type of law, but that's crazy. You but know, you can always get You feel me? You can somewhere. always get it somewhere. And you I'm have to get it somewhere because the motherfucker, we ain't learning that shit in New York sc- City schools about motherfucking real history. And I always ask the question, what is college teaching in African American studies? I don't know because it, it's just, we ain't learning the real history and you're supposed to be in college or university. You're supposed to be a professor and you, you're not teaching the exact shit that happened. You teaching some other shit and only the, the protesting stuff and civil rights stuff. But let's get to the nitty gritty before that. No true so history. They teaching you everything. African that comes American. With the democratic time. They teaching you uh, yeah, everything that comes with being black yeah. American. Black, that's it. You feel me? Since and that's that the again the mind game. You feel me? Peep that. Ask yourself that question. Anybody that took African American studies, please tap in and let us know. If we on some bullshit, let us know. But, you know but I know I'm not. You know what's funny about that? Before we end this one off, right? Our ancestors used to make sure that we knew about our ethnic ancestry, right? The reason why it's like that now is because with our parents, aunts, and uncles, or whatever the case may be, they made sure that they had them distracted enough to not be able to retain the information, mm-hmm. but aware enough to be able to retain the trauma. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? You yep. can't hold on to the history, forgive, but never forget. Yep. You holding on to the trauma. They was in the true history. They was in struggle mode and not thrive not mode. Thrive mode. That's what and when was. you in struggle mode, you only thinking about money. You ain't thinking about no more. See, right now we have the benefit to be in thrive mode because of so many opportunities that we got now, right? Mm-hmm. Being in twenty twenty four, so we got some morals and we got some money, but we trying to get some more M's. M and M, you know that. You feel me? Big facts. Well, let's like that, man. Like I said, bro, peep the mind game, bro. That's what we're here for. It's truth and gems, it's morals and money, the segment. You understand? You see what's going on. Get it. Keep liking, keep commenting, keep subscribing. And if you think we on some bullshit, bro, that ass, comment. Let us know. Yeah, feel free to testify. <laughs> Let us know. It's a free country. I know, I know some of the older crowd is definitely gonna tell us we on some bullshit. But don't forget. We here for we I'm always here to learn. You feel me? I'm always here to other hear other people's perspective. You heard? But just like that, we out of here, man.